Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. Today we are going to discuss another interesting topic that is the packaging of parenteral products from the subject packaging and labeling. So before we start with the packaging of the parenteral product, let us first try to understand and revise what are parenteral dosage forms. So they are very different from all other dosage forms as they are directly injected into the body tissues through the primary protective system of human body from the skin and the mucous membranes. So they have to be exceptionally pure and free from any sort of contamination like physical contamination, chemical contamination and biological contamination. Since they are able to provide you the best 100% bioavailability, they have to be extremely pure and their way of manufacturing is altogether different from any other dosage forms. They ha have to be completely sterile. They have to be produced under aseptic conditions. Now, when we talk about the injectable formulations, they can they are basically packaged into two types of the products. First is the glass packaging and another one is the plastic packaging. So, with the container closure system, which in the case of parentals may range from ampules, vials, syringes, cartridges, bottles and bags are made up of either plastic material or the glass material. A third material which is used for capping out is the rubber. Rubber in, in the various types of the container system, the container is basically made up of the plastic or glass, but the cap is generally used is the rubber material that is uh, mostly the butyl rubber butyl form so the uh, the ultimate purpose is of establishing a very well integrated system whereby it has the excellent sealing now this after having the rubber cap it is being sealed with the aluminium crimplings so this aluminium crimson packing along with the rubber in the plastic container provides you completely container closer integrity so ampules are basically made up of all the glass while when we talk about the bags are they are all made up of the plastic substance the other containers can composed of either glass or the plastic and must include rubber material for the cap per, capping purpose such as the rubber stoppers for various vials bottles rubber plungers and rubber seals for syringes and cartridges so the glass containers which are being used for the packaging of injectables are categorized into four categories first is ranging from the type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 type 4 is not at all suitable for the packaging of your uh, parental products mostly type 1 and type 2 are being used so when we talk about the small volume parentals or the large volume parentals glass is the first choice of the material type 1 glass is the first choice of material which is composed principally of silicon dioxide with varying amounts of many other oxides such as sodium potassium calcium magnesium or aluminium boron and iron so when we talk about the type 1 glass boric oxide can enter into the basic structure of the glass formed by the silicon oxide and persist as a loosely bound so thereby relatively free to migrate the problem is the leaching leaching or the sorption so these migratory oxides may be leached into the solution in which is in contact with the glass so the problem associated with the either of the glass or of the plastic is the leaching problem the material uh, the oxide forms which uh, actually leaches out from the wall of the container into the product so as i've explained earlier glass is of four types basically type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 type 1 glass is the most preferred and the first choice for the packaging of parental products type 1 is basically a neutral or a borosilicate glass type 2 is treated soda lime glass type 3 is regular soda lime glass or soda lime glass of limited alkalinity Type 4 is the soda lime glass not suitable for containers for parentals. So as I have told earlier, type 1 is the most preferred form since it provides the maximum resistance to leachables, to permeation and to absorption. So it has also got a very low thermal coefficient of expansion. So sometimes sulfur dioxide treatment is required for greater resistance to leachables. Type 2 glass may be suitable, for example, for a solution that is buffered or having a pH below 7 or is not reactive with the glass. Type 3 glass is suitable principally for the anhydrous liquids or the dry substances. So because the chances of uh, uh, what do you call interaction between the powder 
as compared to liquid is less so type 3 glasses are preferred for the dried substances and the glass types are determined by two usp tests that are the powdered glass test and second is the water attack test hydrolytic resistance test now when we see the comparative compatibility properties between different types of the glasses we mostly use the type 1 and type 2 glass so type 1 glass has a better resistance for the leaching extent for the permeation extent and other properties so it is most preferred and sought for the packaging of parental products now when, uh, when we talk about the plastic containers thermoplastic polymers have been established as a packaging material for sterile preparations for example large volume parentals and they are also being used for the small volume parentals now what there are basically three problems which we are associated with the plastic containers so first as i have told is the permeation second is the leaching and third is the sorption so what is permeation permeation of vapors and other molecules in either direction may be this way or that way or both the directions through the wall of the plastic containers permeation vapors are being permeated from the atmospheric condition to, into the pharmaceutical formulation or from the pharmaceutical they are being permeated through the plastic uh, walls to the outside second is the leaching whatever constituent of the plastics are being leached out into the container product thereby affecting its therapeutic efficacy third is the sorption which may be absorption or the adsorption of drug molecules or ions on the plastic surface so this again uh, affects the therapeutic efficacy of the pharmaceutical formulation so the basic problem which is the permeation is the most extensive problem there are various solutions which have been acquired throughout the years the first way is by coating the uh, wall of the plastic containers when you coat it with the wall so the somewhat uh, the leaching effect is being minimized for example by the use of an over wrap in the packaging of iv solutions in the poly pvc bags to prevent the loss of water during the storage leaching may be a problem when certain constituents in the plastic formulations such as plasticizers or antioxidants migrate into the product now sorption may be a problem in on a selective basis for example few drugs molecules which occurs on specific polymers for example the sorption of insulin and other proteins so vitamin a acetate etc has been shown to occur on the pvc bags where these drugs were present as an additives in the intravenous mixtures so the most important problems associated with the uh, plastic uh, containers are the leaching sorption and permeation now when we talk about the different types of the parental products the first container which comes into our mind is the ampules throughout it is the made up of the glass and is intended for a single use now the ampules are being uh, broken down at the neck or through various methods but the chances of contamination occurs when they are broken at certain points where by the colored particles may fall into the so solution form so this may there may be alter this there may be another alternative way by which this problem can be prevented by creating a mark or a score on the ampule whereby it can only be broken down to ease this kind of the contamination second are the disposable plastics and glass syringes a lot number of syringes lot number of syringes are may be made up of the glass or may be made up of the plastic they contain of glass or plastic barrels with a tight fitting plunger at one end so a small opening at the other and accommodates the head of the needle now needle gauges are basically the uh, uh, measured in terms of the outside diameter of the needle shaft so they may range into different numbers ranging from 13 which is the largest diameter to number 27 so according to the uh, specific requirements like intramuscular injections or subcutaneous injection different number of gauges have been used they are made up of the plastic with the plunger and are highly used for the therapeutic implementation of parentals now nowadays the concept of pre filled syringes is dominating in the market for example for the diabetes management the insulin syringes which are ready made are already pre filled with a needle attached as an insulin syringes interferons or some other emergency drugs are widely used now these syringes have been used to deliver drug categories like vaccines proteins blood stimulants erythropoietins etc now syringes are made from plastic based 
cyclopolyolefin cop cyclopolyolefin resins which are becoming more common now the best part about these is that they can prevent contamination prevention for a prolonged period of time since they are pre filled under aseptic conditions so they are not to be like used one after another they are very much convenient to the user and the dosages are also estimated and optimized now comes the cartridge tubes now they are the ideal packaging material again for the insulins and other drugs they are used with a pen sort of a system or like pump system or uh, containing the auto injectors and needle free injectors they are also very much convenient to the patients the magnetic plunger less injection system is handheld apparatus with a magnetically driven piston capable of displacing moving and transferring liquid or gas to a cartridge chamber and into a sterile needle for the injections so with the advanced magnetic therapy systems they are again very convenient to use made up of plastic but they are actually helping out the user which requires daily injections now we talked about the glass we talked about the plastic next we try to understand the capping system which is widely used is the rubber closures these rubber closures basically provide the tight fittings into the ampules or the vials and when they are covered with the uh what do you got <clears throat> with the metal crimson rings they provide total container integrity so rubber based closures are effective in sealing provided there is adequate compression of the rubber they may have disc type sealing or relatively shallow stopper sealings which can cause the material to distort rock at the plunge and thereby causing loss of the closure efficiency so rubber stops are widely used for intravenous solutions cartridge tubes and in prefill syringes they are basically made up of the butyl rubber and chlorobutyl rubber which have a majority share of parenteral closure market these material offer the best resistance to permeation by oxygen and water vapor silicon rubbers have limited applications in pharmaceuticals as they are prone to tearing so the best used rubber closures are the butyl rubber closures and chlorobutyl rubber closures now let us try to understand now you know the basic packaging material used for the parenterals are glass plastics rubbers now when they are being united together to form the container closure system this container closure system should pass the integrity test it should not be leaking it should not be leaching it should be have maximum resistance to the permeation there are certain tests which are being used to check the integrity test of the uh, compiled up parenterals for example the acoustic imaging test this testing is based on the principle of ultrasonic energy whereby the samples are being submerged in the water and eco patterns are being analyzed since this is an optical determined uh, test but it requires the expert interference and the it is quite expensive the second cell test which is widely used for the container integrity test of parenterals is the bubble test whereby simply the packages are submerged in the liquid pressurized or temperature cycling to accelerate the leaking this is altogether a simple inexpensive test whereby you can determine the exact location of the leaking can be observed this test is actually insensitive and less efficient as compared to the acoustic imaging test other test which are also being checked to check the integrity is the helium mass spectrometry whereby the helium is placed inside or outside the container and the migration of helium is detected by mass spectrometry since the helium is a inert gas this is altogether a very sensitive test can be utilized but little bit expensive and required expert interference interference to get the results uh, analyzed so, uh, fourth test is the high voltage leak detection test also known as hvld whereby high voltage is being applied to the sealed containers wherein the increase in the conductivity is correlated to the presence of liquid along with the seal now this is altogether 100% automated test and it is non destructive used for the detection of ampules vials syringes blow fill sealed containers altogether it is a very efficient test high voltage leak detection test Uh, next test which is being um, applied is the residual gas ionization test where the high voltage field is applied to vials sealed under vacuum the field causes the residual gas to glow it is basically used for specifically for the life lice products 
then last one is the liquid tracer test whereby the package immersed in solution of tracer chemicals or dyes pressure or vacuum or temperature cycling is used to improve the sensitivity leakage det is detected visually or mechanically since the colored liquid will enter the ampules or the vials under testing then it requires operator independence and is little bit inexpensive so can be utilized for the checking the integrity but the disadvantage associated with the liquid tracer test is that large quantities of samples are required and it is little bit destructive test so i hope friends you are now clear about the packaging of the parental product along with the different types of the material being used for the packaging of parental products with their advantages disadvantages associated and what what are the tests being utilized for checking the container integrity test for parental products thank you so much for watching my video please do like share and subscribe to the channel for getting further updates also please provide your comments in the comments box thank you so much